carry out and dining strategies for happy diabetics. This is the Happy Diabetic Kitchen, the podcast about people who love to eat and cook healthy. This is your guide to the world of healthy cooking and conversations about happy diabetic living and lifestyles, where we simply turn ordinary ingredients into something extraordinary. Welcome to the kitchen and let's get cooking. Hello everyone, I am Chef Robert Lewis, the Happy Diabetic, and welcome to the internet's most delicious cooking podcast. I'm here in the kitchen getting ready to explore a healthy diabetic lifestyle. I want to take the mystery out of healthy cooking, explore some amazing foods and my diabetic journey with my successes and all my challenges. So let me help you live your best happy diabetic lifestyle. So welcome to the kitchen. And if you're new to the show, I'm happy you're here today. With me in the kitchen, as always, my son Jason, our engineer, producer of the podcast. Jason, how are you? Good. How are you, Dad? Good to see you. I'm doing great. Thanks. Um, you know, here we are. They, they say there's light at the end of the tunnel for our COVID experience. And I noticed that in my area, restaurants are starting to open up a little bit. How about for where you live? Yeah. Yeah. Most things are open now. Yeah. Um, are they still requiring you to have masks when you go in? Um, yeah, most require masks. Uh, most are not at like 100% capacity. Yeah. Yeah, same around here. Um, we've not been in a lot of restaurants lately, mostly carry out. How about for you? Yeah, same. Yeah. Doing a lot of carry out. Yep. Yeah. Asian, Indian, fun to explore, different cuisines. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, but as we start to get back into restaurants, I definitely have some strategies for eating healthy in the restaurants. And that's kind of what I want to talk about today. And whether it's carry out or restaurant in, in store dining, uh, there's some responsibilities that you should take as a happy diabetic to make sure you're eating well and enjoying the food that you're eating. So today in the kitchen, we'll be talking about creative eating in a post COVID restaurant scene. We also have an amazing recipe of the podcast, one of my very favorites, roasted asparagus, because we are in the height of asparagus season. And, of course, so much more. So if you're ready, Jason, are you ready? I'm ready. I think we should just get cooking. All Let's right. do it. Let's do it. Okay, welcome back to the kitchen. So my oven is on at 425 degrees, ready for me to do my oven roasted asparagus of love. So with April being the prime month for the high season of asparagus, it's an awesome opportunity to cook some amazing asparagus. And really by the end of May, things start to quiet down in asparagus land. So I was just at the market the other day and saw some amazing asparagus. So roasted asparagus in my oven is one of the easiest ways to prepare asparagus, and it will be in your oven too. So here's the basics of the recipe. We'll get into it in more detail, but we're just going to coat them with a little olive oil, sprinkle with a little sea salt, some pepper, maybe a little minced garlic, and we're going to roast them lightly browned and tender. I like this dish because there's only about 9 grams of carbohydrates and about 75 calories in this dish. And that is for a complete pound of asparagus. So let's put it together. So first we're going to wash the asparagus in cold water, trim away the lower quarter of the stock. We're going to toss the asparagus in a large bowl with about a half to one tablespoon of olive oil about a half a tablespoon of chopped garlic. We're going to add some kosher salt, freshly ground pepper, um, just, you know, to your taste. The oven's on at 425. I like to take a sheet pan, like a cookie sheet pan with sides, and I like to use parchment paper. 
Parchment paper is a conductor of electricity. It works really great. Makes the heat just go really nice, and the cleanup is so super easy. So into the oven with the asparagus, salt, pepper, olive oil, a little garlic, roasting at 425. Asparagus will be on top of the parchment paper. Now, when the stalks start to turn soft, and the skins become crispy, you know you're almost ready. So I like to turn the stalks after about 10 minutes of roasting. And listen, when it's done, you can add your own touches of love. For example, cut very thin rings of red bell pepper and roast them on top of the asparagus. That'll offer a really nice flavor to your palate and a feast of color for your eyes. I like to top the cooked asparagus with a sprinkle of sp fresh lemon, or a spritz of fresh lime. Really nice. Citrus, asparagus, 425. Love at first bite. You're going to absolutely love it. So that's our recipe of the podcast. Oven roasted asparagus of love. These recipes, along with so many others, you'll find in my cookbooks. They're available on my website, happydiabetic.com, plus more recipes on the website also at happydiabetic.com. All right, well, when we return, we are going to get into strategies for diabetics post-COVID dining. So it's no real surprise that I love to eat. Jason, I know you like to eat out. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's part of the experience and the adventure and the fun of eating. But here's here's the deal. Slowly, the post-COVID world is reopening, right? I mean, do you remember how this goes? The waitress hands you a menu. A plate of delicious warm bread appears on the table. You sit back, unfold your napkin, and prepare to savor a restaurant meal. Eating out with diabetes can be super stressful also. Restaurants are in the business of selling food, not helping you stick to your lifestyle way of eating. It's sometimes easier to stick to your plan when you're at home. It, I know it is for me. Still, it's possible to eat out and not blow your, car, your carb count. So here are some strategies and food suggestions for sticking to your diabetic meal plan when eating out. I've got five ideas that can be applied to both eating out in a restaurant and ordering to bring food in. And I know, Jason, I mean, what, what's your all-time favorite bringing food in restaurant? Ooh, um, like style of eating. You know, I, I love Indian. It's pricey, but every now and then I like to splurge on it. Yeah. Just get a, a bunch of different containers of different things. Yeah. And try a little bit of each. Yeah. yeah. I, I feel the same way about um, Chinese food, Asian Asian cuisine. Yeah. I love the little, like, bits and pieces and tastes of all the different Absolutely. flavors. Yeah. So let's start with my number one. Choose your meal while you're still at home. I mean, we do that for online ordering, right? We go online. Right. We look at the menu. And we order so I'm suggesting the same thing apply when you go out to eat. Remain committed to your choice. Start by choosing the restaurant that can serve you a well-balanced meal. Before you leave home, do your meal planning, right? I mean, even though you're not having to cook, you will still want to plan ahead by choosing a restaurant that has a diverse menu. For example, are there some items that are st stated fresh? Or did I choose everything fried spot, right? I mean, you kind of get the idea. And looking online will really help. And after you choose a restaurant, you'll want to look up the menu online and decide in advance what you'll have. So make choices that align with the goals and limits you would set at home. Look at the nutritionals ahead of time. It's likely that you'll be able to pick a healthier dish before you smell the smells and see the entrees at neighboring tables. I don't know about you, Jason. I Before I order, I'm always looking what other people are eating, right? Mm -hmm. I kind of think to myself, am I going to order the right thing here? Oh, for sure. So, you know, I'm easily influenced. Um, if nutritionals, though, are not posted online, 
Call to request nutritional information on the menu items. It's becoming more common and even required in some cases for restaurants to provide this information required by law. If the restaurant has 25 more locations, they have to provide it. Knowing the exact number of calories and carbs in the menu can help you make an informed decision about what you eat. Now, I love to scan the menu for healthy buzzwords. Good words to look for, baked, broiled, boiled, grilled, poached, roasted, steamed, stir fry. Those are my favorite healthy buzzwords. But what about the words to avoid? Well, I avoid these following words. Au gratin, breaded, cream or Alfredo cream-based sauces, and soups are usually through the roof in total calories and carbs. But what about dessert? Decide about this at home too. It's all about the balance, right? So can dessert fit into an overall meal you've chosen while keeping you between the guardrails? Might you have fresh fruit for dessert or share one dessert with the table? Portion sizes in restaurants are unrealistically large. It's tempting to eat every bite. Okay, make a fist right now. Everybody at home, one hand on the steering wheel and make a fist. Take a look at it. This is the size of the average human stomach. Many restaurants give you enough for two meals in one serving. If you know this is going to be the case, this is what I do. I simply ask my server if a half serving is an option or ask for a take-home container and set aside half the dish for later. Um, as soon as the food arrives, you can do this. Now, many restaurants will even do it in the kitchen, bring you half the portion and then another little box of doggy, you know, your doggy bag to take home. You can also split an entree with someone or pair a healthy appetizer or salad or broth-based soup for your meal. We call this pair and share. Instead of a main course and an appetizer, get two appetizers. Or share one appetizer and a main course with a friend. Don't be afraid to ask the waiter to bring two plates. Or when you order your entree, request that it be divided in half and that half be placed in a doggy bag even before it gets to the table. That's the strategy I use and it seems to work really, really well. All right. Tip number three, don't be afraid to ask the chef to modify. Simply ask for it on the side. Half the cheese sauce, salad dressings. Some restaurant dishes come doused in dressing or sauce. That usually means you're getting more calories, sodium, and fat that you need or expected. So to scale back, ask for it on the side. Then dip your fork into the sauce before taking a bite of the food. It works really good. That way you don't have to smother the sauce all over the food. You can also drizzle it on the salad or entree one teaspoon at a time. Better yet, flavor your salad simply with lemon juice and a little olive oil. All right, number four, don't forget your meds. If you take insulin to control your diabetes, I take fast-acting mealtime insulin. You want to be sure that you have it with you and that you've calculated the carbs, and that you're ready to go. And then lastly, number five, treat yourself. Listen, friends, let's just be honest. It's fun to go out to eat. I love to go out to eat. Make choices that are things you can easily purchase or cook at home, and slow down, right? Michael Pollan, a food journalist, simply states it best, I think, this way. The sheer abundance and variety of food in America and the Western world as a whole has bred a vague indifference to food, manifested in a tendency to eat and run. Eat and run rather than dine and savor. Take your time and slow down. Don't eat and run. Dine and savor. Take your time. Slow down. Enjoy every bite. So those are my five tips. And um, enjoy the eating out and dining out and carrying out experience. Um, 
we're we're close to the end of the tunnel here, folks, and I'm just so happy about it. Um, so that's it, my five tips. All right, we'll be right back. So be sure to follow me on all my social links. You'll simply find them all at happydiabetic.com. Just look for all my links at the top right-hand side of the page. And hey, if you have a question for me, go to my website, hit the contact tab, you ask questions, I'll answer them, and who knows, they might even become part of the next show. Maybe I'll select your question and send you some cookbooks as a big thank you. Thank you for listening, and if you are loving what you hear in the kitchen, please leave a comment or feedback at Stitcher, Google Play, or Apple Podcasts, or wherever you're listening. Your thoughts and comments are very much appreciated. Thank you again. Our podcast is produced and engineered by Jason Lewis, our theme music by the Happy Diabetic Kitchen Band, and of course, our kitchen mascots, Scout and Tucker. Scout is chilling, and Tucker is sleeping in a Starbucks box, dreaming of coffee, I guess. I'll post that picture on my Facebook page. Thanks for tuning in, and let me leave you with this thought. Elizabeth Gilbert is an American journalist and author. She's best known for her 2006 memoir, Eat, Pray, Love, which has sold over 12 million copies. She once said, I'm a better person when I have less on my plate. Wise words. So long for now, and remember, no one loves you more than me.